choose the Ducks and want to come here and coach here? Oh man, it's the opportunity. Um, you know, like we say, we kind of think of this as the SEC on the West. Um, with this being my what sixth school in the Pac-12, I always wanted the opportunity to uh, to get here and coach. And so the opportunity came and took it and ran with it. You have a couple of stops in the Pac-12, obviously. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like you've grown as a coach uh, over these past couple seasons? Well, I'm just um, being able to learn from everywhere, from everybody. I've been around a lot of good coaches, offensively and defensively, and then through my younger years, just kind of just worrying about myself, and then getting older, now being able to, you know, take a little bit from everybody and what they do best, and adding it into my game. Just like a player, coaches do the same. Hey, do you go field boundary or left right? Um, I like to try to play on both, especially this early. I try to cross train so guys can play the field and the boundary, and then we let it shake out as it may, depending on the opponent that we play against. So speak to your relationship with Christian and just the like that and that level of importance and, and what he brings to his team. Oh well, he is big time because he's able to uh, be a big brother to the rest of the guys on the on the in the squad. Or as far as that, his uh, good cop bad cop type of thing. He can uh, he could be the good cop and I'm the bad cop because he's been with me for two years, so he knows my moods he knows how i go and how i teach and he's able to kind of you know in incorporate that with the other guys he led the pac-12 to tackle the loss mm -hmm. in the corner position mm -hmm. what you guys are trying to do with simulated pressure how important is that from a true corner not from a nickel well um it's very important to shoot for corner period being able to tackle you know what i'm saying so he has a knack for um diagnosing plays that are happening behind the ball because a lot of those things wasn't his tackles for losses weren't always pressures. They weren't always corner pressures. It was just things as such where we were up defenders and he had the opportunity to pull the trigger and he did. So. What have you seen from Jaleel so far these first few days? You saw him taking reps with the twos. Last, uh, uh, last he's doing Thursday. good. He's, 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 he's definitely going to help us. Uh, he's going to be strengthening the depth, definitely. Um, just trying to get a little bit more out of him as far as catch him up mentally and technically. He's a little bit behind on that as he should be. Shoot, he should be getting ready to go to the Brown here pretty soon so but he's here and he's working and he, he's going to be right come fall camp how do, how do you evaluate triquez and just he he played corner last year it looks mm -hmm. like he might be playing a little bit of safety mm -hmm. right now for you guys but just his his versatility well he started off in the corner room when we first started but uh, he's been all his reps on the field has been at safety so i haven't really got a sure. hands-on with him yet to evaluate him at corner but i'm sure after we get a little base down in the defense and he's secure at the safety spot then we'll cross train him and have him out there on the edge what do you like what do you want your corners to to be known for what are you looking for your guys to to be on the field oh obviously toughness first and foremost uh guys that can tackle and then obviously guys that can cover if you can't cover then you probably not playing that position in the first place but you know I love for my guys to be known for toughness um, you know tenacity short memories and guys that are to get after it and then, uh, you have you have Manning you have Williams you have Bridges a, a lot of guys you probably played almost anywhere in, in the mm -hmm. defensive backfield just how much fun is that for you to have a somewhat multiple group with a lot of versatility oh that's exactly what you want you know what I'm saying so just guys be able to plug and play anywhere you know as of right now because of the new terminology and the new scheme and the new technique it's kind of guys are just solely learning like you said, field and boundary corner right now. They're just learning that. And then we'll progress into guys playing the star position or maybe playing boundary or free safety or stuff like that. So With, with Bennett, he got so much praise last year for just being a really high IQ, mm -hmm. high IQ football player. Mm -hmm. How have you seen that kind of display itself and what, what's it like working with him? Well, one of the first things that start off like that when it shows is his communication skills. So. Uh, his high FBI shows up a lot because he's very communicative out there on the field, you know what I'm saying? So he comforts the younger guys when he's out there by reassuring what coverage and what technique they're in. So that's always a blessing to have, especially in back of you as a corner when you got your safety barking at you. Yeah. Well, I've college and pro mm -hmm. so many times that the, you see the corner not turning his head, look for the ball, mm -hmm. or he would have had an interception mm -hmm. or a breakup. Well, how, do you, always, how do you teach that? How do you teach that? What the fine line between when to do? That's always a, a, a every every job I go to. That's always a big big subject. Um, it, it depends on the coverage. It depends on your position at that point in time of the play. If you're in phase, out of phase, that's all that stuff matters. And whether you look for the ball, which a lot of people. I would say armchair quarterbacks might not understand totally. There's, there's a certain time when you can look up for the ball, and there's a certain time when you shouldn't. Well, so, the receiver's eyes are getting big. Do you look for the ball? <laughs> depends on if you're in face. <laughs> if you if you looking at the receiver's eyes, looking back through, that must mean you're probably in chase mode. Yeah. A lot of the time. So if you're in chase mode, you might want to catch up first before you look back. Because all you're going to do is watch the ball get caught. I think, a <laughs> having been to uh, yeah. six different Pac-12 programs, obviously, you know, you heard a lot 
of Oregon, you know, as, as a competing team. Yes, sir. A place like Colorado is not exactly a place like Oregon. Uh, yeah. how, how does what you've experienced here different or similar to what you knew about Oregon as a program, hearing it from the outside? Well, coming here, obviously I played here a lot as an opponent. So, you know, you love that the, the atmosphere in the stadium and how rowdy the crowd gets and all that kind of stuff. You just love that part of it. So to be able to be a part of it was great. Um, this is a college town, awesome. You know, um, I went to a college town school when I went to college. So coming here, just kind of reenacting that type of thing is, is awesome for, you know, especially from a kid from Los Angeles California, you know, Pasadena, California to be exact. It's a great place to come in and, and get, you, get your college experience in. Looking down the road a little bit, I'm not sure how much you can answer this question or not because mm -hmm. you're a recruit, but your son, how much fun has it been to watch him go through the recruiting process and the process uh, of potentially coaching him in the future? It, I mean, it, it's been good, you know. Um, it, it's, it, it, it's helped me become a better coach and a better recruiter. How, how big is it to finally have the recruit, uh, recruiting resources available to you as opposed to having to try and compete against the machine? H-U-G-E. <laughs> <laughs> the prospects of coaching with established coaches like Dan Manning, Tosh Lapoy, hey. how I know that's got to be exciting as a coach. How has it lived up this past few weeks? Awesome. It's like you're trying to get your, your master's. You know, getting getting your doctorate in school. So I mean, it's it's awesome being around guys, young coaches that are energetic, very smart, um, know what they want, know how to get it done, know where all the snakes are within the scheme, that type of things like that is 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 it's very comforting. Well, when the staff is is mostly this young relative mm -hmm. to a lot of other you know Power mm -hmm. Five staffs, what, is that communication different just between? guys that are all of a similar age group versus having to be a you know the, one of the younger guys on the staff of 60 yeah. year olds or something yeah, like yeah. that well I, I guess it could be I, I you know I never look at it like that because I'm always a young guy even though I might be the oldest on this staff I'm always the young guy so that's how I like to think about it <laughs> you're obviously a defensive coach but a lot of that is trying to stop the offensive side of the ball yes, what have you seen from Kenny Dillingham so far that's kind of challenged you or helped you grow as a coach uh, he's very innovative uh, he's he's able to He's able to put his chess pieces in play and, and get those get those big pieces of the ball when he needs to get them. So moving guys around and uh, creating matchup issues is I see that that's that's a really a high point for him, which is great. Okay, cool. All right, thanks. All right, thanks, fellas.